Good evening, folks, and welcome once again to Coming in Clutch Sports Podcast that is on every Thursday from 6 to 7 on the Eric B. Media platform. I am your host, Nelson Cabral, and to my left and your right today, we got Colby T. Torres, the DJ man. What's up, Colby? What's up, now? How are you, brother? Good. I am so excited to be back, folks. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but we are back, and we are in action, and boy, do we have a lot to digest on the show. But before we get going, let's get started. And uh, thanking our sponsors. And again, it's always being brought to you by Troy City Mortgage, working with you to bring the best home buying experience. Troy City Mortgage, the best place to get a mortgage in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Led by David Pereira, the team at Troy City have local roots and deep knowledge with very expert solutions to bring you the best, the best mortgage possible. Give them a call at 508 207 5864 508. 207-5864. And welcome once again uh, for all the sports heads. I know it's been a little while. I'm hoping that you are liking our official Facebook fan page, Coming in Clutch Sports. And, of course, we have our phone number, which you can call, and now you can text, Kobe. Wow. Yes, we have moved up. It only took 17 months, but we're here now. <laughs> and uh, we can call and text. I think we'd always text. I just think I'm just so illiterate. Uh, and uh, that number is 508-974. It, is, it needs to be in my dialect, my mother tongue, as we say. Uh, if, not to be confused with what, I, what, what I'm not doing to my mother at all. That is not what's going on for you knuckleheads. That is a old tradition for mother tongue, meaning my native tongue, which is the Portuguese language. Portuguese. Portuguese, yes. So you can type in. So no excuses here. If you don't want to call, you don't want to hear your voice or whatever. You want to stay behind the phone and be a and be a complete, complete wimpy, wimpy. I'll take your Texas. That's fine. But if you want to call in, it is up and at them. That number, 508-974-3040. If it's your first time, uh, welcome aboard. If it's your more multiple time, welcome back. If it is your first time, stick around. Don't go anywhere. Let's get those eyeballs going up higher. We want to get to those double digits. And uh, we are going to get started with a lot to digest. Um, we have usually uh, opening hot vents. Uh, are, we, are we doing those today? Got, yeah. I'm ready to go. I got nothing. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm already hot and bothered exactly. by many things. So we're going to get started. And look, uh, a lot has unraveled with the Boston sports scene and really in sports, Kobe. Really, since our last um, our last show, and uh, what we had uh, in our last show was that the Boston Celtics were still in the Eastern Conference Finals, or so they were about to begin the Eastern Conference Finals, or they were already in the Eastern Conference Finals. Either one game, or they were about to begin it. Okay, so uh, they had uh, gone down significantly three zero, and they decided on Game Four at the second away game um, at the Miami Heat to be able to wake up and start playing more of the game that they had been playing all season long. And they were able to scratch and crawl in one game, blow out the Miami Heat. So as far as I'm concerned, Cope, this is what I want to allude to. The series was going to go seven games, and I'll tell you why. I think that the Miami Heat had found the lightning in the bottle, and they had been playing exceptionally well above their, their, their pay grade, as I would say. And the Celtics had regressed below their pay grade. They definitely have. And I think that was going to create a matchup to go seven games. However, the way we got to game seven was very unorthodox. There wasn't really uh, a splitting. There wasn't, it wasn't like an even 1-1, 2-1, 2-2, 3-2 one, two, one, two, two, two kind of combination. The Boston Celtics were down. Everyone has already seen the stat of 0-150 or 0-149. and 149. So we already knew that coming back was going to be difficult. But what most of the fans and the folks haven't seen is out of the 149 to 150 times that a team has been down 3-0 and the other team that's trying to crawl back into the NBA series, usually the team that's crawling back is the team that has the lower seed. Correct. So the higher seed is the team that gets the 3-0 lead and the lowest seed wants to make it very interesting. Mm -hmm. And whether it's rigged by Vegas, whether it's rigged by the Donahues of the world and, and the plenty, Zebras. Plenty of those. And there's plenty of those in the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Whatever those. the case may be, it's usually the underdog that's trying to make a run for it. In this case, the Boston Celtics were the favorite. They were, they were heavily favored since day one of the season. Exactly. 
So there was a lot of hope that perhaps it was going to come back and perhaps it was going to be something that was going to unravel where maybe the Celtics can make history. Mm -hmm. The reason why the Boston Celtics did not make history is because they crapped their pants in games that they had to win. The Boston Celtics did not make this interesting because they refuse, they refuse to take care of business at home in front of the fan base that got them there. The Boston Celtics refuse to close out games. The Boston Celtics refuse to keep their identity going for 48 minutes. The Boston Celtics refuse to want to win a championship. Because if you wanted to win a championship, you would have done the things that you're supposed to do in the game of basketball, which is complete your screens. Fight through those screens. Go to the basket when you're supposed to since Miami has no rim protection. Defend at a high intensity. If you miss 63s, don't keep chucking it up. Okay? So that is my sort of my, my take on the game is that, listen, kudos to the Miami Heat for winning. They deserve to win game seven because the Celtics did not deserve to go on. Now, I know that there was a big, you know, a significant injury of a rolling of an ankle. I understand that. Yeah, but, but, but if the, you want to talk about that, right? And Jalen Brown keeps there's rumors that he wants to be the guy. Wasn't this his opportunity to be the that guy? That is exactly what I was thinking. Great. Tatum went down. 1B is up. You, Mr. Brown, who has been crying since 2015 16 when he got drafted, correct? That he wants to be the guy. Here is your opportunity on game seven. There is no game eight, Jalen. You know what he does? Eight turnovers. Thank you. Thank you very much for playing. Party and gifts are at the door. Don't let the ass smack you around. You absolutely were abysmal in the game that we needed you. We as fans, the Celtics needed you. And you decide that you're going to turn the, the ball over. So let's just go, just humor me for a second. Let's assume this is the stat I was trying to find. How many points did the Miami Heat gain out of the eight turnovers? Now, I'm going to be conservative. And let's assume that every time he turned the ball over, there was a bucket of two points. 16. 16 points. What did they lose by? 20? Phenomenon. It's math, folks. You see, it's math. <laughs> the, the game of basketball is very, very simple. You move the ball around. You find the open guy to get this high percentage shot. That's what you do. And on the other side, you play like savages, and you rim protect to no kingdom come without sneezing on the guy. It, it, you know what? You know what? Really, just watching the series, and Spolstra kept doing it, and I think Philly kept doing it. They kept going into zone, and the and the Celtics were. It was like oh. they've never seen a zone. A, yep. I've seen a zone since I was like seven years old playing rec basketball, yep. and even I knew what to do. So you're telling me a professional basketball player has no idea what to do? And if you want to criticize coaching, I'm sorry, but this has nothing to do with coaching. I'm gonna. I'll, these, I, we'll, we'll get the coaching in a second. But, but these are ahead. these are professional. NBA basketball players. They have seen every defense thrown at them. Exactly. And a zone is something that's common. The, it, it, zone has been going on since the beginning of the game. It, uh, the game meaning the game of basketball. They were playing a 4-1 in the box, right? And they see it and they're like, they get all, oh my God, we don't know what to do. So, how do we break this? Yeah, it, There was moments when the Boston Celtics <laughs> forgot how to play the game of basketball. The better team did not win on the paper. The better team that won was the team that wanted it more. Because um, don't tell me, please, please don't call and text and tell me that the, the roster for Miami is better than the roster for the Boston no way in hell. It's not. No way in hell. But this goes to show you that with some, some coaching, which is this is what, where I want to go to coaching now. In the NBA, the tendency is that coaching is not required. Well, it's funny how Spolstra has been throw or Spos, whatever his nickname Spoh. is. Coach Spo. Coach Spo. Okay. Mr. Spoke. Mr. Spock. <laughs> Mr. Confidence, huh? You see the confidence that guy's got in his oh, press conference? Oh, yeah, boy. He is full of it. And, and, and what a tan he has. What <laughs> a tan he has. Let me tell you something. That man has a tan. I, I don't think he even knows what white looks like. <laughs> it is. I am grossly jealous by his tan. And there's amazing hair, by the way. Yeah. Guy's got white teeth, black hair, and a tan. Still looks the same from when he won championships yep. with LeBron. I think he does Botox in the offseason. Probably. You know, Miami being down there, they'll find people. But anyway, going back to the game, um, there's no question that Spolstra it has the backing of, of, Pat, of Pat Riley. Of course. And the, his coaching and his mindset and his attitude helped win at least a game or two, which goes to the 
importance at some level when your roster is not at the elite level and you okay. have a really good player, which is Jimmy Butler, and you have a good – let's not lose our pants, by the way, with Bam Adebayo. Can we please stop with the Bam Adebayo phenomenon? The guy is not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's not Robert Parrish. He's not, he's not even Yao Ming. You know, and, and he's not any big center. He's a good player who works hard, who averages 17 points a game, and, and he had moments when he was a complete disaster. But that roster – was predicated on coaching and players playing above their head. And Caleb Martin now, everyone is saying, pay that guy. Do you know who else was saying to pay that guy last year, Kobe? Can you tell me what player on the Boston Celtics they were saying to pay that Hold guy? On, let me see here. It's a guy that didn't even get really playing time. He has a gigantic ass, and I talk about it every time on Mr. the show. Grant Williams. Grant Williams was supposed to get 16, 15. Help me out. I know you're, you're a numbers guy. 15, 16 million. And the Celtics says, nah, not really. Now, I'm not telling you I would not want a Caleb Martin on the team. I'm just saying Caleb Martin's average for the 82 games. was like eight, nine points. Eight, right? nine points, two or three rebounds. He was just a nice piece off the bench. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how he does in the finals now because Caleb Martin has to eventually come back down to earth. Again, there must and, and listen, be every question. And, and, I, and I hate to say it because he had a hell of a series. He did. But that's not Caleb Martin. No, it's not. It's not. Him or his twin brother. I think that, that's just not him. No, even not. even Vincent, that's just not that's not yeah, him. And Gabe Vincent and Gabe Vincent and Gabe Vincent was, you know, did take a, a, a did, listen. I actually like Gabe Vincent better. I think he he's a he's a little more explosive. He has a better handle. Um, I, I actually like him a little bit better, but I can see why people fall in love with Caleb Mark because Caleb is such a high, he has such good reach and good height, correct? And he has good size. And it's like you do, he didn't even miss it's like every time he shot yeah. it, I'm like, this is he's not yep. missing this. Yep. So Anyway, um, and Al, my buddy Al is on, and he's saying that Pritchard wants out of out of Boston. I mean, it, on that's that? That, that's fine, but to me, what has Pritchard done to really win anything here? Well, I wouldn't even say win anything, but well, I mean, but like you want to demand a trade, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Peyton Pritchard is a nice story. He's undersized and and he's feisty, but but he, again, another guy that just wants to chuck it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? In, in this league to survive, if Peyton Pritchard wants to survive and if Peyton Pritchard wants wanted to play in Boston, get more mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. Well, then facilitate. Be a true point guard. Don't just get in the game. And as soon as you get it, take a step back and chuck it up. I don't want to waste a ton of time, you know, a ton of time with Peyton Pritchard. I do think I do think he can pass the ball pretty well. He doesn't use it enough. And I think he comes off the bench. He feels the need to be the Eddie House. And that's not. Yeah, he just feels the need. He needs yeah. to hit a three. Hauser Hauser is that guy. Hauser you know? and Pritchard. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, going back to, to the game here, I will say this about coaching. And it hasn't been discussed. But can I ask this question about the, the coaching staff of the Celtics? Go ahead. Is it possible that the Boston Celtics coaching staff, which now we heard today, half of them are going to three. go follow three, right? Yep. Are going to go follow Ime Doga to Houston. Correct. Is it possible that that <laughs> coaching staff – and the general manager set up Missoula for failure. I, I mentioned this briefly a few weeks ago. Let me, let me explain what I'm trying to say here. When Stoudemire left, the team, I felt, took a dip on that bench. Their attitude, their mindset, their approach, their execution. Well, Stoudemire played in the league. And when I look at, at, at those coaches, and I see three that couldn't, that went to Ime, it's like they couldn't go there fast enough. It's crazy, right? The season's been over, what, two days, and they're already... They're already gone. And think about it, They want to go to Houston. Houston. Has anyone seen how Houston plays? Has anyone seen how Houston plays? They have a disaster of a program right down there. Just, just to answer, Roy, uh, if you want to just say, there's only one player that I know on the Heat, and that's Haslam, 42 years old, who's been sitting on the bench... Just collecting checks and collecting rings, I guess, right? I, from Miami, I, right, right. Yeah, he's no the one. only player in this. And then Kevin Love, right? Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Love going from, from from Cleveland, which by the way got completely benched. Like, yeah, I like, mean, like, like a, a so has him, has him and Love haven't done anything. I mean, I'm sure they're great in the locker room and, and, yeah. and motivating these guys. Yeah, but uh, uh, so yeah. And, yeah, I mean, and that just ends the question. But going back to what we're talking about, I feel that Joe Mazzulla matured very quickly, and tonight uh, and today rather. There was a post-season post, post -season conference uh, with uh, Brad, Brad Stevens. Stevens. 
And there are some things there that we can mince words, and I'm not going to indulge because we don't have a ton of time. I wasn't too happy with Brad today. I will tell you, I felt the same way. And I, I, and, I, I and I still like I, I like Brad. I didn't like a lot of the things that were coming out of his mouth today. Like, okay, well, too the, passive. Too pa- we, were the, we were the second best offense, second best defense. Okay, that is true statistically, but you were not the second best offense or second best defense in the playoffs. Not consistently. The Celtics should have taken care of business. This was the year. You had you had said it. Think they about it. They paved the way. It, this it was like the seas parted, right? No Milwaukee. Yep. No Philly. And as and as much as you know, I no hate Cleveland. to say this, the Knicks. I know the Knicks aren't you know this better than the Celtics on paper, but the Knicks own the Celtics ass this year. They did. Okay. Both so they didn't have to play them. that. They didn't exactly. have to play either of those teams. And then all of a sudden you get the eight seeded Miami Heat who had to who lost to the Hawks. People forget they lost to the Hawks and had to play another game to get into the, just to get into the playoffs. Right. Right. That to me. And again, I know we're talking about coaching. That to me is the immaturity of the two best players on the Celtics team. So the question is this, what is the process going forward? And before I go into that question, I I do want to step back for a second. I I want to get my point across with Joe Mazzulla. I think Joe Mazzulla was left out there to dry, and I think he was forced to grow up very fast oh, in the yeah. NBA. I mean, think about it. He, they, they, they named him the head coach, what, two days before training camp? Yeah, they did. Right? Something like and, that? And, and the thing, and, and, the, and the wording and the verbiage that Brad Stevens used this afternoon, this morning, was that Joe Mazzulla had to grow in dog years which meant he had to make leaps and bounds to grow quickly. So I will tell you this. I thought there was a lot of maturity that happened even within the series of the Miami Heat. The fact that they came back, my, don't tell me that Miami Heat, the Miami Heat were, were laughing all the way into game seven. There was an oh-oh moment going on there. It's just the minute that there was an issue with Tatum and him rolling his ankle in the very first play, I said, I said to myself, how was this team going to react? And I didn't feel good about it because everyone looks for Tatum. There was an oh-oh moment. And I think everyone tried to do too much. They knew that there was no tomorrow. And where were the where were the experienced guys? Where was Al? Where was Marcus? So I am not going to sit here and say, let's blow everything up. I'm not saying that. I will say what I think needs to I, I Here's what I think needs to happen. As much as Jalen can be frustrating, folks, I think you got to keep him. And I think some of our fans here, some of the viewers are saying, I think you have to keep him. I mean, what, what's the other option? I mean, I keep, if, I, I keep hearing Dame, Dame Lillard. Listen, and I love Damian Lillard. I do, too. But the guy's 33 years old, and the guy gets hurt all the time. So so you're going to trade away a 26-year-old uh, superstar right. for a 33-year-old superstar with plenty of injuries on him and plenty of miles, right? I, I, they, they keep talking. I'm not saying that the Celtics, uh, you know, the thing about they're still young, but what we're trying to say when they're still young, they're not referring to, yes, they've been in the league for a while, but to win championships, it takes a little while. Yes. And this year, they lost in a different fashion. And I don't know how you get rid of the guys. I'm not telling you that Jalen's worth a Supermax contract of $290 million. Is that what the number Just say is? close to three hundred. Okay. Right? I'm not saying he's worth it. But what can someone tell me? What can someone tell me? that is going to be a true alternative of a player that's under 30 years old. If you have options, and if the listeners know, and if the viewers know a player (laughs) that can take care of business, that can be the true number two behind Tatum that's under the age of 30, that can make the numbers work, then let us know. Because I've tried to find one it's not that easy. So I am not telling them I'm thrilled with Jalen. I'm not even telling you I'm thrilled with Joe Mazzulla. But I will tell you, I think the, 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 the players to go first, I think Marcus and Al have to be looked at very, very significantly. You know, Al doesn't owe this team anything. And Al doesn't owe the Boston Celtics anything. The Celtics don't owe him anything. He did what he could. He ran out of gas. You're not going to ask a lot more for that guy. And Marcus, I think his mindset, his attitude just is, is fizzling out. I don't know if his voice makes a lot of sense now. So now you say to yourself, well, if you leave, where's the veteran leadership? Yeah, but he's not letting the two superstars in this team grow. If Marcus is here, I think he's a problem. You know, and, and I'm not saying, you know, he's, he's causing problems in the locker room. I that, think he's causing that but problem. At, but at the end of the day, Marcus thinks because he's the longest tenured Celtic that what he says goes. I don't see Haslam doing that. And if he's saying it, he's certainly not playing. So I think you need to keep Missoula. Because you signed them. Boston Celtics, you signed Missoula. 
four years. And you decided you're going million. and you decided you're going to commit to Missoula. They gave him four years, nineteen million dollars. So you've committed. So now you need to you have to deal with that. You want to commit prematurely without the season being over. And now you have to commit. That is what you do. And then you see how it unravels next year. Yeah, but this is their opportunity now, right? This is Missoula's opportunity now to get three guys in here, right? That aren't part of EMA staff, right? Why? So there's plenty of coaches out there yep. looking for jobs. So if I'm Brad Stevens, I'm definitely going to be, in, you know, helping Missoula in the search, even though he tried to say today, oh, it's Missoula's search to find guys. No, Brad, you find him you guys, find guys exactly. that have plenty of NBA experience. That's what I'm he not needs. saying a head coaching. We're just guys who've been coaching in this league. And you're saying for it better years. in Kobe, you're saying it better than I am. That is what I'm trying to allude to. The coaching staff, the management, and the ownership and the players let down Missoula. I know Missoula had weird things that he was saying and he was snippy and very quick to answer questions. And I know that's a pain in the butt. And, and I know the media doesn't like that. And I know he kind of came across a little, how can I say, douchey? Yes. Okay. And he did. And he did. But that coaching staff was not helping him. No. That coaching staff was one foot out the door. These players were fighting for him for a few games, and when it mattered, the question is, why did you get down 3-0? What happened down there? And what happened was, I think those players didn't want to play. Uh, and if they yeah, wanted to play, e they didn't show I up. don't even know if it's that, though, now. I just think you got these two idiots who now are first team All-NBA, and they just think they're just going to show up. We're going to put 35 up against this team, and we're going to win. Think about it. Right? Yeah. It, I think it's gone. Should it's be, going to the head. You're talking about both Jays. And, and, and then look at Marcus won the defensive player of the year last year. He wasn't the defensive player that we thought he that he was. He wasn't right? even close. He gets that he gets that award and all of a sudden it goes to his head too. Yep. These guys need some type of like reality check because listen, don't you, you, don't, think you, you don't just show up and you're gonna win these games. This is the NBA effing playoffs. Don't you think that they would have learned already? What to do? I mean, based on last year if, and I, this I, year I, now. I know we talked about this, but how can you not be motivated after the way you got embarrassed in the NBA Finals last year against the Golden State Warriors? Okay, mm, yep. you got embarrassed. Okay, I would have went in that off season, motive like extra motivated. Well, Brad Stevens will tell you that they did get motivated yeah. because they were the second best offense, second best defense. Yeah. What are the motivations that you want, Mister Super Boston Green Teamer fan? My answer is we use it when you need it. And you needed it in the playoffs. And I go back to the to the different series that the Boston Celtics played. They played against Atlanta. They played one too many games that they should have played Listen, there. It should have been four games, a sweep next. Okay. Philly, five. Okay, maybe I'll give you six games. Right. Okay. They, and even Miami, five or six games. I don't I they this is what I'm saying. They had an easy road to the finals. Think about who they had to play last year to make it to the finals. I know. I, and I, know. I believe Miami was number one seed last they year. Were right? the, they were the number one seed. Yes. And it came down to a three point. You had a healthy Giannis last year you had to go up against. Uh, game seven, and that's right. Where, yep, correct. Correct. It was a much tougher role last year. You could, you should have swept the Atlanta Hawks. Instead, you'll make it go six games, two more games, as far as I'm concerned. You should have taken care of business, you know, in Philly and had not and go five, six games. It goes to game seven. Yeah. So I'm already yeah. I'm already yeah. counting three more games more than what you should be playing that you could have exerted that energy to the Eastern Conference finals. And if and if you think about it, because you want to everyone saying, well, Tatum got hurt. Well, guess what? There would be no game seven for him to be rolling his ankle. That's a very good point. Five zero eight nine seven four three zero four zero is the call. If, if listen, it's also the text call. So I have a text line here. So I have someone saying, good show so far. Keep it up. Thank you, Mr. Anonymous. Um, and um, I know, and, and, you know, Cass is saying the two most tradable assets outside of the J is smart and Williams. Yeah, uh, Williams is, a, is an interesting, pro you know, it's an, is an interesting, um, you know, piece. Yeah, because but, I, I do believe you're not yeah, going to get much for Al. But Yeah, but did you, did you hear Brad Stevens today talk about how, like, you know, how Rob, because Rob Williams missed 36 games in the regular I, season. Another they're, they're soft, poopy pants. Their defense. No, no. That's such bullshit, yeah, man. It's that's bull what crap. that is. It's bullshit. Uh, sir, but I'm letting you know news flash. The Boston Celtics love to keep their pieces and hate to get rid of assets to get better assets. And Williams, I think, should move on. 
I mean, is he ever going to be healthy? Is he ever going to be the player? I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think so. In all his years, he. I don't think he's been. He's been healthy. Rob has has moments when you say, "Wow, there's that rim protector. There's that guy." But he's soft too. We talked about this the last show. He is soft. Every time he goes for a rebound and he brings the ball down, he can't secure it. People just come and take it from him. Yeah, that was game. Was what game was that? It was a game. Three? Was, I think it was like the first. It was maybe the maybe it might have been the first game. Yeah, might have been the first. Correct. It was the first game. Uh, oh, the first game where Rob looked so soft. I'm sorry. They need to get a big. And we've talked about this. And Rob's not it. So if there's going to be pieces to move, you try to you try to get what you can. I I'm in agreement. I you know I don't think they're going to let Rob go. But if you told me should we, the answer is we should. Yes. It's time to move on from that guy. And you're going to have to find somebody else. I think you need to clean house, and you got to keep three core people. I think it's Joe Mazzula, Jalen Brown, and Tatum. And then you go from there. So Brad Stevens cannot be pulling a Danny Ainge, where the Jay Crowners of the world are staying here because it's the best contract. Yeah, in, no shit, right? The best contract in the NBA. In the NBA. <laughs> I, 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 if I hear that I one more time, that. I want to take this microphone and, and, and put it up his keister. Okay. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, when he was here, could not be, could not be going. You know, you know, um, um, Gordon, you know, um, Gordon Hayward couldn't trade Gordon. Couldn't Hayward. trade these guys. Listen, they need to make moves. This team was a disappointment as far as what their agenda was when this season began. And I, I do want to see Missoula in a year two. You don't just get a 34-year-old, which is what I think he, he is, a 34-year-old coach who gets put in a predicament that's pretty egregious, pretty significant, and pretty serious to then allow him to work his way through, find his mindset, work what he has to work. And if you recall, he was very quiet. People were really quiet about what Joe was doing because the Patriots were taken over the limelight. And as soon as the Pats season was over and the NFL was over, the attention came over right to him. Correct. And that was right around the, uh, the, um, the all-star break. Yes. So there's been criticism, you know? And, and yeah, we talked about the three-pointers as well, going back to the game and just the series as well. This infatuation, you're shooting 25 29%. At one point, they had the stat. They were like 7 for 42 behind the arc. Why are we shooting threes? I want to tell you why I think they're shooting threes. Because I do think there's a part of Joe Mazzullo where he's very, very stubborn. He says, listen, we got to keep trying. If you got it, you shoot it. Because that three-point arc helped us be who we are. Well, that's not who you needed to be now. It wasn't working. Al was terrible behind. That could just be his legs. He just may not have had the legs. A three-point shot requires a lot of leg power. I haven't seen Al like this in a long time. A long time. I just think he ran out of gas. I just think the man ran out of gas. You know, and that three point shot you live in that Derek White thinks of playing game seven, by the way. I appreciate you. You know, the guy was struggling and then he figured himself out. Yeah, but and then he, he started it. driving to the hoop and the game changed right there. That's when the game got the closest. And then guess what? He was the only one. Nobody else followed suit. They all just kept chucking it up. Yep. Yep. They, they, and they wouldn't. That they was would. their chance right there. Right after halftime, when, when, when they started creeping back in because they were driving in, they were getting fouled. They were taking 15-foot shots, 14-foot shots. What a phenomenon. What a phenomenon it is to know that when you drive on a team that has no rim protection, how you are either going to get the bucket in one or you're going to, or you're going to actually hit the bucket and get two yeah. or you're going to go to the free throw line and make them. Because most of the time in the NBA, if you're sneezing at anyone that drives inside the lane, and they get hit, and they're going to the free throw line. Correct. And you saw what happened in game six, where Butler had an atrocious game on game six. And he had 11 or 12 points, 11 points in the fourth quarter. And he wound up ending with 24 points. Did you see that, dog? Yeah, I saw him go three for 19. And he was missing really bad shots, and he got his points on, on, on the free throw line. And that's the part of Jimmy Butler that's always been very, um, very intriguing to me. On his game, he knows the spots that work for him when the, when he's not playing well. He knows it's the baseline. He knows it's the little you know you know teardrop that's inside the paint. He knows it's him driving to the hole and getting hit and going and making his free throws. He knows that's his bread and butter, and he does it better than anybody in the league. I think I think Harden tries to be that guy, and he's just not because of his age, and I think he doesn't execute it very well. But Butler does that very well. And you know what? What you know as as crazy. As amazing as that game finished, I wish the Celtics lost that game. 
if if you were to tell me after they hit that game winning shot that they would have came home and had the dud performance that they had at home in game seven, I would have told you. Don't miss my time. I wish Derek White got that ball off after the time expired. I, I, you know what? It's a very good point. It's a very good point because to see that and to give me false hopes as a fan. I mean, think about that. They won that game. They literally took the throats. They cut the throats of every Miami fan in that arena. They were all nobody. The whole place went silent. Yep. They had no idea what they just saw. Even though they, they showed the heat bench, the heat bench just had no idea what just happened. And you're telling me you're going to come out the way you came out in game seven on your home effing court. It was embarrassing. It was. It was embarrassing. Well, listen, that is the recap uh, you know, on, on the season. Hey, there isn't much more to say. The Boston Celtics were their worst enemy, and they had been their worst enemy all season when things were not going well. They were their worst enemy because they refused to finish off games, refused to finish off teams. Four minutes left before the game is over, they decide they want to change their mindset, change their attitude, and they would allow the opponent to creep back in. And you can't do that in any sport, especially the NBA. And what's going on with the TD Garden? What is it with these teams that play in the Garden that can't win games at home in the playoffs? Boy, let me tell you, what a plague is! What what a disaster! What a what a, what kind of witchcraft voodoo what's, stuffs like, going on over there? They, they need some holy water in that. But that, you know what I'm saying? How do I you mean, how do you not win win these big games in your home arena? And here we have now two Florida teams. <laughs> God, am I vomiting in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> the Florida Bleeping Panthers in the Stanley Cup final and against the Vegas Knights. Bruce here. Oh, God. If that is not, let me take it up my keister <laughs> and keep my mouth shut. I don't know what is. I mean, unbelievable. You have the eighth seed, right? Yeah. Panthers, who played a tournament, one, whatever the NHL's version of that is, to get in. And they're going to the conference finals, and they beat your ass after you were up 3-0. Or oh, whatever it was. They were up 3-0, right? 2-0, I think. 2-0. Anyway, then it went 3-1 at one point. And then you have the Vegas Knights. The Bruce Cassidy aficionado. The guy that you didn't want. Because he was too hard. Because he was too hard on Marshmonts. And he was too hard on on, on Krejci, who wound up going back to Sweden or Slovakia, wherever he's from, <laughs> to go play. And make half of his money. Maybe that's the guy the Celtics should hire, Bruce Cassidy. Yeah, stick a yeah, stick a fire on their ass. <laughs> and then you have the Miami Heat. Same story, just a different sport. Gets in, turn in tournament, whatever they have to do. Beat another Boston team. If th- I despise Florida teams in general, like Tom going to Tampa was like the worst thing for me. <laughs> it was like it's probably almost as bad as him going to any New York team. Yes. So. If Florida, besides Disney, could really could blow up. I could care less. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, and yeah, and you know, here are two Florida teams that are in the finals of their respective sports. Is this the beginning of Florida beginning to be a, a, a state or a championship t- title town type of thing? I hope not. Boy, do I hope not. <laughs> Have you talked to Florida fans? They're insufferable. I mean, we're insufferable too, but we have backing. We have history. <laughs> Florida's history is good weather, Mickey Mouse ears, and fake tans. Show up at halftime. Yeah, show up at halftime. I got to go to my booth. I got to get my $75 nails done. <laughs> and I got to pull up my $200,000 car that gets two miles per gallon, which is fine. That's their aura. But please don't tell me this is the beginning of something. Please, for the love of God, for the good Lord upstairs, please listen to my prayer. If you could bow your heads with me, please. <laughs> Thou shalt not win anything in Florida this year. <laughs> For the love of God, please. You know, but let's go on and talk real quick. I do want to share some gears. How is this NBA Finals going to look like? Who are you rooting for now? Are you rooting for anyone? Are you going to be an NBA fan and watch the game? I will tell you that most fans and the two to six shows here on the local radio stations are going to say that this is not the way to approach and that we're being crybabies. I am absolutely 1,000% rooting for Denver. But I want to tell you why I'm rooting for Denver. I think I have a man crush, Kobe, on Jokic. He is a hideous human being. He's a good player, man. But my God, can that guy play? 
He plays like he's in, in like he's in some backyard in Serbia where there's a thousand degrees and he's playing like on dirt and he's just grinding it out and just playing backyard basketball. Well, this is this is what I'm curious to the see because you were dog. talking about BM Adebayo. Let's see what Adebayo does against Jokic now. And it's going to be an interesting match. This is a real center he's going up against. Again, right? right, exactly. And I think Jokic should have been the MVP again. I am sorry, but I believe that. I believe he should have been the MVP again based on what he was doing. Embiid had a great – I'm not telling you it was a blow away. I'm just saying, what are you coming, number two? Yes, I believe so. So I'm not telling you I hate the Embiid winning it, but watching Jokic play and watching that team play, does that guy not emphasize what that – is he not the centerpiece of that team? Is he not the one that's still playing? I mean, listen, the Lakers, which I will tell you, I don't despise the Lakers. Like, I despise the Yankees. I despise the Canadians. I don't despise the Lakers. Sorry, Roy. I, I know. Sorry, Roy. Uh, I, I really don't. I, I, the Lakers have to, you have to, res- you have to respect what the Lakers are as a franchise. Okay. They've won plethora of championships Listen, I think and different errors. 18, right? I think uh, 17, are they both? I think the Celtics and the Lakers are yeah, tied, right? I, 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 I mean, listen, I'm going to root against them and I, and I, and I kid about them. But they are a team that's a team when they're good, it's good for business. Don't tell me that the NBA and Silver was not loving the fact that the Lakers were still in the hunt for this thing because the Laker fan base is ginormous. And again, the Canadians as well have their history in the NHL, had winning the most Stanley Cups. Irrelevant since 1993. But besides that, so, but what I saw there is that Jokic went to the Lakers. He didn't even bat an eye on being concerned about what I think is, listen, I think LeBron at this point is a top three player of all time. I am letting you know, I am going to admit that I have now put him in the top three of all time. I think it's him, Kobe. I think it's him, Kobe and Jordan. I think it's him, Kobe and Jordan. And then you can put your four or five, you can put Curry in there. I think he's better than Bird. I hate to tell you, but I think he's better than Bird. I would take him on his prime versus (laughs) Bird. And listen, that's hard for me to say, but I have to say it. And my, this is, this is my opinion. So what I'm trying to say is he played against an all-time great, and Jokic took it to them. Yeah, but it wasn't just Jokic. Oh, no. but I mean, Jamal Murray. I question Jamal Murray's defense abilities. I, yeah, I but that guy, was a, what a sniper he was in that, in that, it in was. that conference and, finals. And they're going to need him. So here's my curiosity level. What kind of Denver team are you going to get? Listen, I now that all those breaks. I, I loved watching them play. Let me tell I you. did too. I, I and, and I'm not one to really, you know, kind of kind of focus on other games really too much. But when I watched that series, man, Denver was explosive. Denver was exciting to watch. They were. And they played and they, and they appeared to play the game the right way. Yeah, Meaning and- like completing the screens, getting to their space, moving without the ball. So here's my thing. I think it's going to be a pretty good series. I will tell you this. I, as much as I would love to see it be a sweep and then, but I don't think it's going to be a sweep. I think the Miami heat are on this mission. That is concerning to me. I thought about it at first. I do. I am picking Denver. I'm going to pick Denver in six is what I'm going to do. I think Denver has quietly been one of the best teams all year. They own the West most of the year. They deserve to be there because they took care of business with their conference. Well, it's going to be interesting too. Let's let's see what happens because Denver hasn't played in like a week. I believe they've been and, off for and a week. So they're going to have, well, they're going to have some fresh legs too. They will, but are they going to have the cohesion? Are they going to have the, the momentum, timing? Moment, everything. Exactly. Are they going to be able to do that? So we'll see. But I am picking Denver Nuggets to win it in six games. Um, I think Jokic is going to be a massive problem. And the, the, the Miami, he have not faced a guy that consistent and that dominant. He is, in my opinion, again, the MVP. I know he won it the last two Second years. Second round pick, too. But that guy, the way he plays the game, you know, look, you look at Embiid and how things ended with Embiid. I think Embiid is a very good player. But there's something about Embiid's game. And I don't know if it's an Embiid problem or a Philly problem. But I think it's a Philly problem. Where Embiid may be in a different mindset, in a different place. And let's see what happens next year. Did they already hire, who was it, Nurse? So, yeah, but did, so speaking of Nurse, did you see this? So th- something just, it was just weird to me, okay? So Nick Nurse yep. was, uh, what do you call it, being interviewed for the Milwaukee Bucks head coaching position. Who yes. Had, so he, yeah, which he has because, Giannis. Okay. Buda Holzer, Buda Holzer still out there? Yeah, Budho is no, still, still out there. there. Okay. So now he so he takes his name out of the out of the Milwaukee job, right? And then goes and takes Philly. To me, I feel like that's kind of ass backwards. I right. feel like the Milwaukee job is would be a better job than Philly. No, I mean I get you having Bead, but I mean 
Harden's not going to stay in Philly. Very odd when I saw that. I'm glad you mentioned it because I wasn't sure if we were going to get to that topic. Right. I'm, right. I mean, Absolutely. I don't and think Harden's staying in the, Philly. I don't think so either. I think he's going back to Houston. I, I do think the only thing I could think of is market. Market, market, um, of Philly versus M- Milwaukee's Milwaukee, market. Yeah. It just, it just, they're, they're, they're two different markets. But the roster in Milwaukee, look, they're going to be another age older, another year older, rather. But it's still Giannis. Yeah, but it, I mean, but the team and, 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 and the core and, and, around and, and, him is a lot better already than and, set in stone than what Philly has. Yeah, they, they, no question. I think Philly, without Harden, they go back to being what they were. You know, six, seven seed. You know, prior to Harden getting there, they weren't that great all year. Um, then they kind of hit a little bit of lightning in the bottle. They wound up winning some games, and they got up on the higher seat. Yeah. So I am not convinced um, that you know. But Nurse, we'll see what happens. Let's see what happens with Embiid. Is he going to buy in? And we, is he okay with having again being the guy playing a lot of minutes if Harden's not there? Five zero eight nine seven four three zero four zero. I do want to shift some gears real fast. You see the money that Monty Williams got to be the head coach. Holy of, smokes! Of was the that Pistons? To Ching? To he Ching. T- he said no at first, but he couldn't pass up that money. You see that money? Un- oh, wow, unbelievable! When I saw that, I I had to hear it twice. I couldn't believe that. Unreal! What that guy is getting. I would have said, "Yeah, okay, no problem. Oh, I'm going to coach the Detroit Pistons. You got it." Wow, and they're and they're a dumpster fire. They are not a good team. They got some work to do there. But man, well, I guess it starts with coaching. We'll see. So, in in, in conclusion, this, here's what I want to see. I want to see Joe Mazzulla back. I want to see what he can do on a second full year. And I do want Tatum and Brown back because I think that they're still your two best chances to build around. Because if you get rid of them, what are your options? I don't think you have much. Well, did you hear Tatum's press conference? He wants, he doesn't want Brown to go anywhere, right? Which it's, it's not a good thing to hear, right? You want to hear some it type is. of cohesion? If I can just ask Brown to please, for the love of God, do not go to your left on your handles. And if you're going to work on anything on the offseason, work on your handles and your ability to protect the, the, the ball. Because I thought he did a much better job this year. What he grew in his game was getting that nice jumper remember, you know, in the elbows. Yes. Right. And be able to drive and finish for the most part. That was an improvement. But his handles are just a disaster. When he goes to his left, it's an automatic turnover almost, it seems. And then if, he, if he gets a decent guy playing defense on him, it, it, it's an utter disaster. When he dribbles the ball, he just looks awkward. So, well, did you uh, hear Caleb Martin? They they asked him, they interviewed him, and they said, you know, once Tatum went down, you know, was your game plan to make Brown go to his left? And he said, "quote It was always the game plan to make him go to the left." There you have it, and that's the coaching of of, of Spolstra, where they're watching film and they're finding the weakness. But look, l- l- let's not kid ourselves. The Boston Celtics came back on three games in a row against this team, and I believe it was game five. That they blew him out. Yes, in, in Boston, like that game wasn't even close. It was like one hundred and one to eighty three or something like that. So the games were relatively even, Stephen, and it came down to Game Seven, and the Celtics just fell short. So we'll see what they're going to do. They have a lot of work to do, a lot to think about. I did not like Brad Stevens' post game, post season conference calls or whatever you want to call it. I did not like what he had to say. I thought he was trying to, you know, use a cop out and giving these guys excuses. And if that's what's going on, then maybe that's a problem as well. Well, I mean, for people that think Jalen Brown's not going to be here, there's a rumor that he's purchasing uh, some big ass condo in the in uh, South Boston. Oh, well, there you have it. That, that will be a good sign. Five zero eight nine seven four three zero four zero. I do want to shift gears a little bit into some NFL talks. So for those of you who have been dying for us to talk football, here is the very first one. Um, OTAs have begun, Kobe. And uh, Mac Jones apparently went 13 for 13 against the ones. Obviously not very contested. And Bill Belichick said his name yesterday. (laughs) Said he works hard. He works hard. In the gym. Yep, and I'm not very fully convinced on, on, on how Bill feels. I, the question becomes this. Is there still some negative aura on how Mac carried himself, how he spoke about the team and the coaches? Has Bill forgiven him? Is he still in the doghouse? Is Bill O'Brien still scoping things out? Or does he have a game plan? Has Bill given him the green light to say, what do you think? Because here's what was told and what's been said. Bedard says. The big boy. Big boy Bedard, who looks fantastic, by the way. He does. Bedard says that he, Bill O'Brien, 
is very much 50-50 and doesn't know which direction to go with the offense because he hasn't gotten a lot of guidance. He also feels, and I quote, that there's still there's still um, <coughs> lingering issues from the last season that haven't been smoothed over. And he feels that the way Bill spoke about Mac was almost like, good job, good effort. Kind of like what a high school kid would say. And he didn't sound very convincing. Apparently, Zappy threw a hell of a ball, one great ball, where he put some zip on it, on, on a route. And it was a wow factor that some of the analysts saw and like, wow, that was a pretty good ball. I will tell you, I, think, I do think the quarterback competition is real. I don't think it's max 100%. And I think Bill is doing that on purpose as he spins like a lifeguard his whistle. I do think he's making it on purpose. Mac does sound a little bit more mature. His voice doesn't sound as squeaky for some odd reason. Maybe his ball finally dropped after 22 years. Is that the scene? Well, he saw Taylor Swift. So, well, maybe that's what it was. Um, and and I do think that Mac is going to grow a bit this year. But isn't so? I don't know if you saw Mac's interview or whatever you want to call I it did. after practice yesterday. The key word I took out of that whole thing. They asked him about working with Bill O'Brien, and he said, quote, normal. It's been normal. Right there, he already took – think about it. I think he took, he took a shot right there and basically said last year it wasn't normal. It was, right. It, it was abnormal because – And actually, been, this year, it's been normal. When I, you know, it's a great point. And I think what, when I heard that, what I sensed was it's what an NFL normalcy should be. This is what I it should have, look like. This the is what season to now – the progression into training camp into the correct, season. correct. It, it's it, he's like basically saying, "Hey, bozos, <laughs> this is all I've been asking for is to have a shot to have a normal, conventional, unorthodox, you know, normal out of the no, no normal situation with my coaches and with my offensive coordinators. And instead, you brought me not one but two, double the trouble, and." It's reassuring knowing that maybe Mac is in a good place mentally. And I think that's what the question is. Where is he mentally? Yes. So, of course, DeAndre Hopkins gets released, which is very interesting to me. Because DeAndre Hopkins was talked about as being a guy that the, the, Celtic, that the, 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 the Patriots had to give something up to get, him. to get him. And guess what? You have to give nothing up to get him. And maybe that's what the plan was all along. So where is DeAndre Hopkins going to land? Is there still a market for Hop? See, in, in this whole DeAndre Hopkins thing, it's been bothering me a little bit because I find it funny how when he was with the Cardinals and he was on the trading block, he was still a number one. You had to get DeAndre Hopkins, right? Everyone saw about how great this guy is. Right, right, right. Now, all of a sudden, he gets released, and you have these NFL scouts or executives saying he's slow, not the same type of player he was, no burst. To me, like... Something's not making sense there, right? Something's weird. And I th- because uh, how how can that flip within a matter of what six weeks? I think the reason why he flipped is because he got cut. And when they got cut, they say, "Well, what is Arizona seeing that we're not seeing?" And it is funny how, yeah, but it's simple. Arizona just didn't want to pay him the money. That's what I think is. Well. That's all it is. They didn't want to pay him, and that- I mean, they're not going anywhere. So why are they going to pay him that money? And why why should he stay there on a team that's going nowhere? So I do think I don't know if he's a number one, but I do think he's a better option. I, I still think he's a great player. I still I think he's a great player. I think he's better than. Uh, but I, than, I'm just uh, saying OBJ. all the slander that now that's coming out. It's just, yeah, it's funny how it, it was. Just... It, it, at one point, it was a must, 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 must. This you know the, the the pages must, 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 must get this guy. Well, I'm just talking about in general because right. now all of a sudden, like Buffalo, Buffalo, go go get him now. Buffalo's like, oh, well, we'll, we don't know if we have the money for him, and it's just weird. Oh, yeah, it's just it, kind of it, weird how this whole odd. DeAndre Hopkins thing is playing. It out. is on, and I think the longer he sits out there, his stock value goes down. And my understanding is he has no contract now. Correct. Right, so he's like unemployed, and no money coming in. From what I understand. Yeah. So I mean, you can say he wants to go to a contender, but at the end of the day, it's all about dollar and dollars. He's going to go whoever's going to pay him. And I hate to say it. But Baltimore effed that up by giving Odell Beckham gar- all that guaranteed money because DeAndre I not, Hopkins is going to be looking for that same amount of money now. That money could have gone to DeAndre Hopkins, and they went too quick. But I'm not even saying that. I'm just talking about like they 
they gave Odell Beckham all guaranteed money. They did. So now Hopkins, that's where he has to go when he when he's going to negotiate with these teams. All right. right? Well, the question is, what is the magic number to pay DeAndre Hopkins again on your team? Roy's saying it's twenty million. A I don't know year. about that. That sounds very heavy. I say anywhere between ten and thirteen. Wow, that's really low. I was at the fifteen mar- million mark. I think would be a, a number that would get him. I don't think up. he's going to get fifteen, unless it's. I will unless, tell you this: unless it's Boomer's team, the Cowboys. We don't. We know Jerry Jones. He throws money around. He throws money around like it's. But he. But even that, I heard a rumor that the Cowboys need him. The Cowboys don't need DeAndre Hopkins. Why they, they already. Need him? They already have plenty of wideouts. I don't know why they would need them. You need one more. I mean, you got you just got Brandon Cooks. You got Ceedee Lamb. You have um, Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup, when he stays healthy. And, and, and they still have Schultz. Right. Do they... How well, much? How much? How much? Yeah, but look at look what, who they're What do you think they should pay him? I, I I think twenty is. I think so too. I think so. That, I, Fifteen million is a good number for me. Twenty sounds high. Motivated, you know? I'm going to tell you anything between ten and fourteen is a steal. I think for the guy, ten and fourteen is a steal. You know, but you know, yeah, man, I tell you, I like that. Fifteen sounds nice. Fifteen, <laughs> holy thirty-one. Isn't this? Yeah, he's, he's around there. Well, I mean, again, the San Fran need him. Yeah, but I mean, see, th- but, but the problem with you... San Fran is if you look at the coach, he doesn't fit what the coach wants to do. Yeah, I don't think so. He's not like off to take you know get you no know, take the take the top off the defense kind of. Guy. Shanahan just wants to. Run the ball, throw to Debo. Debo, all of a sudden, he's a running back. Like the offense that it's Shanahan, RPO almost. It's just it. it's just a weird offense for DeAndre Hopkins to think he's going to get seventy catches in that offense. How about Vegas? Do they have enough money in Vegas? I don't know if Vegas has enough money. He could. I just don't know if San Francisco. I think I'm with Kobe on this, Boomer. I don't know if San Francisco. I'm just saying that like, mindset. It, it makes sense. It, it, Correct. Oh, oh, there's no Someone's question. Someone's going to oh, yeah. have to pay attention to him. Don't and don't you think that the Pats could use a guy like that? They, I mean, I think, yeah, but we could. You know who else could use him? The New York Giants. Yeah, that's a team that yes, the running back will see, but they paid. They, you know, I I know uh, who's that guy? Rizzo. Jay Rizzo. Jay's not on. Jay, I'm not sure where you are. Maybe he left us. Maybe he just forgot. You should have a calendar reminder, and, and this should be my, my <laughs> ugly mug every Thursday from six to seven. But maybe that's a team that, that would want to go. And you know, please, he cannot go to a team like Detroit, even though they had Speaking a nice. Speaking of Detroit, did you see where they have? Do you see the Super Bowl odds? Did you see this? No. Detroit's like eight or ninth really? best odds of winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, no shot. No way. I can't. I saw that. I'm like, wow. No way. Well, listen. I did. I did want to wrap up. So, just real quick with, with the with the with the Patriots. I'm glad that football's around the corner. I'm glad to hear the word normalcy is happening in, in, in Gillette Stadium. I'm happy to see that Bill is using Max name, and I'm kind of happy to see that there is a little bit of maybe to McSorley and Zappy and Mac. There is a little bit of competition. I think it's good for business. I do think Max your guy. And I think it's going to come down to what Bill O'Brien wants. Bill O'Brien is the guy. And I think the quarterback that they signed from Louisville, they said they put him as a wide receiver. Just, a, just an interesting nugget. I thought, you know what? I think, and I think we mentioned that on this show. Now, I'm not going to use a comparison of Julian Edelman, but that's what Edelman was, Kent State quarterback that was converted. We'll see. I am, I am very intrigued on that, on that pick, I will I mean, tell they you. Gave him a lot they of, paid him. Well, they gave him a lot of guaranteed money. And I, and I am curious to hear, have you heard anything about the kid from LSU on uh, Booty. No, I've not. I've, I've heard stuff about the, the other guy, the kid, for, the kid from Liberty. Okay. Oh, um, Douglas. Uh, Douglas. Yeah. So I am interested to see what's going to happen. Are you going to go and check out the Patriots when it comes August? Because I'm hoping that I can as well. I think I honestly think a lot of people are sleeping on the Patriots. This year. I, I do think that, which means it's a great opportunity to, to have you use your kid and use your memorabilia to get autographs, you know, and make sure that you get what you want there. So either way, um, I, I am I am good to see that there are some football talks happening around the corners and that, you know, things are happening and players are showing up, and I am intrigued to see what happens. Last thing, we have about a minute. 
Yeah, Boston Red Sox. Hmm. Boy, are they a frustrating team to watch. Just as they think I'm, I think they're doing well. They <laughs> just don't. as they, just as they almost suck you in, they just know how to suck you. And right. I really think, Kobe, this is going to be the, the season. They're going to win a series or two, and then they're going to have a dud. They're going to win a series or two, and they're going to have a dud. The starting pitching is okay, but the bats have gotten cold again. Nine runs in twenty-five games. I mean, let me let me tell you, nine runs in twenty-five I, games. I, I must say this: I, I like Massa. Massa has been pretty consistent all year. He has been. And I know that was a guy that, you know, they gave big money to, and everyone was like, yeah. well, we'll see how he does. But he's been pretty consistent, right? And let me tell you, Duran, right back to the, the, the friggin' pumpkin Duran that he was last year. Right. I can't wait for what's his name to come back from his rehab assignment. Oh, oh, uh, Trevor Story? No, the other one. one that, the one that uh, Adam Duvall. Adam Duvall. Because yeah. let me tell you, Duran, I'm sorry. As soon as Duvall is activated, you your ass is going back to Worcester. Yeah, he was. You see Bobby Dahlbeck hit like seven home runs in Worcester in like two weeks? Yeah, he's the six-foot-five monster. He can still stay there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. He can still stay there for all I care. <laughs> um, how about Cassis? Um, I feel bad for him. Um, you know, the guy, the kid has had a lot of promise. I mean, he was one of the top prospects coming up. And, again, I know people want to give up on him, but everybody forgets this. I'm not ready to give up on him. No, but everybody forgets this. When Dustin Pedroia was called up his rookie year. He's he first. sucked, okay? He, did. He, did. he was awful. I remember that. Awful, awful, awful. What happened to Pedroia? He became a league MVP. He did. Okay? And in, 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 in a, a championship. So the only, thing I, the only thing I don't like about the situation is that first base is a main key part of a baseball team, and Hein Bloom, for some reason, doesn't take first base serious. I mean, he does like think about he it. He thinks third more serious. Well, but I'm just saying he he's they first base should always have a cog. Gonna have a cog of that in that lineup is a first baseman, and he never did anything to kind of solidify that, mm -hmm. you know. And I get it. They he was banking on Ca uh, Casas, but like you had Hosmer, you traded for Hosmer. You didn't have to pay Hosmer any money. That was part of the deal. Like his San Diego was paying all of his salary for two years. Two years. Yep. Why wouldn't you keep him? Where did he go? Chicago, maybe. That, that's what I think I heard. But too. but you know, but you, but you understand what I'm saying. I'm not I saying know. Hosmer is going to hit all these home runs, or but he's another veteran presence. They, they don't want veterans. Run. They don't want veterans here. That's right. They don't want veterans on this team. They want this young team. They want to be. They want to be the Tampa Bay Rays. And unfortunately, they're not hitting on these guys. And and, and you know and, what? And now I'm hearing about Meyer. Is it Meyer? Is that his name? Mar Marcelo, Marcelo Meyer. Meyer. Got promoted to yep. Double A. All right. It's like he's going to be a year out at least. He's coming though. We'll see. I, I I mean I've heard him. He can rake, but so is Dawback. And I'll be excited to get Bobby back here. No, but you know it. But here's another thing. And what about Wong? Return back to reality. Yeah. How about this relief pitching staff? Like this issues on this team. Yeah, but and again, it's not Cora. It has not. And, and this is why I I, I hate it because I love Cora. Yeah, me too. But they're just not giving him the talent. And the whole Trevor Story thing pisses me off a little bit because remember last year? Oh, we're not going to get rid of Xander for Trevor Story to play shortstop. Well, guess who's going to play shortstop when he comes back from his rehab? Trevor Story. Mm -hmm. Kiki has to get out of there. Well, he. Do, but my point is. But it's not on him. I mean, you didn't have to get rid of Bogarts. That's all no, I'm saying. No, no. But they kept trying to spin it. Yeah. Like, well, no, no. But it's happening. What everyone said was going to happen last year is happening. Trevor Story is going to be your everyday shortstop when he comes back in a couple yep, of weeks. And, and we have fought that, and we thought they could keep both, and I still think they could have kept both. Um, I don't think I'm not seeing Xander is killing it out there in, in San Diego. He's, he's had a bad month. He's he has not been good. He's had a he's had a very bad month yeah. out there. So I mean, I do wish him the best. Obviously, I mean, I like Xander. He was a he was a great Boston, you know, Boston player and a good Red Sox. But I want to tell you, um, Trevor Story, what that was that was the plan, and I was hoping they, that that was not going to be the plan, but it was. And now it's biting them in the butt because what is he still twenty five days, twenty days out? I don't know, but he's come. I mean, supposedly he's already you know getting ready to to get to get going here. But think about this: they're at home. Against the Cincinnati Reds, I can't name one person on the Cincinnati Reds, and they're about to get swept. These are the games that you need to win. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying you're the one of the top five teams in the league, but these are games that a 10 to 15 team in the league should right. be winning. Yeah. Right. 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 Well, folks, that's all the time we have for for the show. Uh, we've come up against it, and of course, we want to thank all of you. We talked quite a bit. We recapped the Celtics. We 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 discussed some oh, football this, talks. This, this Jay. Uh, there's Jay. There's Jay. We, we, we're just talking about your lovely Giants. Real quick, Jay. Do you think that you should go get DeAndre Hopkins for that bum overpaid Dan Jones? 
That was the question. But now you can't answer because we're about we're up against it. So I'm glad you called, but you didn't. And I see you were supposed to, but you can now you can text. So again, uh, that is all we have time for for today. Uh, and uh, we will be back again next week, uh, six to seven. It is it is the call sign. Um, he just woke up. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm glad that we're, we're your alarm clock. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad that you woke up. I'm glad that you chimed in. You, you brought us up to two people what watching. Do you say? He said <laughs> no, because QB sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good stuff. Listen, um, but it's been a it's it's been a it's been a a a, a morning few weeks. Yeah. It's been a morning tough month of of May, but uh, I'm gonna recover. It's now June, first first day of June. It was payday for me personally, and for Sergeant Amaral. <laughs> <laughs> I know how he loves that. The boomer man. The mass aren't. <laughs> sure, yeah. A different show for a different day. <laughs> Let me know when that one's on. Uh, that one's seven to eight. <laughs> all right. Well, that is all the time we have. We have to get out of here. We have another show coming in, so don't don't go anywhere. Just hang tight with there's more for you. Uh, is there another show, Boom? 730. It's a forever experiment, right? It'll be on. So so don't go anywhere if you want to get it's still bets and all kinds of goodies they have going on there. So, so check them out. We're the boring ones, but what are you going to do? Uh, we did get up to 10 people watching, so that was good. Uh, hopefully you can keep liking our, our our Facebook page. It's coming in clutch. Sports, our phone number here, 508-974-3040. You can also text in the line. And uh, we will be um, here again uh, next week. And obviously we want to thank uh, Troy City Mortgage. And Troy City Mortgage works with you to bring you the best home buying experience. Troy City Mortgage, the best place to get a mortgage in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Led by David Pereira, the team at Troy City have local roots, deep knowledge with expert solutions to get you the best, the best mortgage possible. Give them a call at 508-207-5864. 508-207-5864. And boy, let me tell you, I'm excited to be back home. And uh, there will be a lot of talks. We'll see what this Red Sox team can do. But for now, we have to get out of here. It's been a good time. Thank you for all the fans. Thank you for all the uh, the viewers. Keep liking our page. Keep sharing our shows. And we will be seeing you again next week, 6 to 7, on Thursdays, Eric B. Media Platform, coming in clutch sports. I'm Nelly. I'm Colby. And we're out. inventory I have that you criticize me about for buying around Christmas time. Can we just celebrate the night? It should be, should be easier to do even better next month. April is even better, guys. But in the meanwhile, yeah, congratulations. Great. Good job. Tomorrow we'll Good lose job. again. Good job. <laughs>